Let's pray real quick. Father, Holy Spirit, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for who you are. You are faithful. You are love. You are grace. You are mercy. And Lord, there is nothing. There is no thing. There is no thing. There is no disease. There is no diagnosis. There is no relationship. There is no addiction. There is no demon in hell that is impossible for you. You have already overcome it all on the cross. And so we give you all praise and all glory today. We love you and we say our hearts are open for whatever you want to do, say, however you want to lead us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This morning, I want to talk about the meantime. We've gotten a lot of uh, we've had a lot of prophetic activity lately. I mean, we always have a lot of prophetic activity, but we actually had Ed Trout here. He gave prophetic words to people. Uh, if you're new and you don't know what that means, the Bible says that God's thoughts towards us are like the sands of the sea, the stars of the sky. He is always thinking about you, and he's always thinking about you, and he's always thinking about you, and you, and you, and you, and he's constantly thinking about you. Now, I have, we have five dogs. I know. I married a circus. We have five dogs. One of them, she's the littlest. Her name is Poodle. She is a poodle. We're very creative with our names. Um, and being the littlest, she is the loudest and the meanest, and she rules the roost. And she's my favorite. Even though I don't have favorites, she's my favorite. And I think about that little dog a lot. Like, I carry her around, I hug her, I squeeze her, I kiss her, I talk to her, I dream about her, I watch her. She was sleeping on the couch the other day. It was so cute. Her little feet were wiggling, and all of a sudden, she woke herself up with a bark, and she just kind of looked around like, where am I? She was dreaming. Like, I love that little dog. As much as I love that little dog, God loves us more. And he is carrying us around, and he is hugging on us, and he is squeezing on us, and he is talking about us, and he's saying, Jesus, Jesus, did you see what, did you see what they just did? Oh, that looks so good. Oh, I'm so proud of them. Like, God is constantly thinking about us, and at times when we're in the glory of the Lord or someone's working in their gifting, we get one of those thoughts delivered to us. I'll say delivered. You know, sometimes... It may be a dream that you have. Now, sometimes a dream that you have might be the pizza that you ate. It was too greasy. But sometimes dreams, they're biblical, they're in the Bible, they're from the Lord. Sometimes it can be a vision. Sometimes it could be that you're reading the Bible and all of a sudden it's like the words just jump off the page and you know it's God speaking to you. Sometimes it's in the Bible. It could be an audible voice. It sounds crazy, but... God does things. I mean, he used a donkey to talk to people. Like, God can do what he wants to do to get a word across to us. And so that's what a prophetic word is. It's a word that God has for us, either about who we are, where we are, or where we're going, or what he has for us. And there can be some time between when we get that word, when we hear the word of the Lord for our life, and until we see the fulfillment of that word. And that time in between, technically it's called in the meantime. In the meantime means the time between two events. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes that time is mean. It is mean. It can be hard. It can be a challenge. It can be difficult when you have this promise from God that that was just, oh, you know, you, you are living paycheck to paycheck, counting out your pennies. I remember there was a time, now, this was because I was stupid in how I spent my money, uh, honestly, but there was a time when I would dig through the car trying to find $2.25 so I could buy a hamburger at McDonald's for lunch. Like, there was a time when I was counting my pennies between paychecks, and I would get a word that the Lord was going to provide for me. And so, whoo, 
that brought life. That brought hope. That brought peace to me that it was coming. But it didn't come the next day. <laughs> it took time. And at times, that time in between there was mean. <laughs> it could be mean. And so what do we do in the meantime? That's what we're going to look at today. What do we do in the meantime? Because God's timing is rarely our timing. You know, when we get the word, okay, I, I used to get words all the time about my husband. Now, I didn't get married until I was 48. And so, you know, when I was 38, I was, you know, holding on for that word. And when I was 40, I mean, I nearly slipped into a depression because I was hitting 40 and wasn't married. And, and then when I was 42, and then when I was 44, and then when I was 46, and then I was looking at the big 5-0, and I was praying, Jesus, please, please. And I get it. Like, I get it. The time can be mean when you're waiting on a promise from God, and God's timing is rarely our timing. But here is a promise that we can stand on. Point number one, his timing is perfect. It may not seem perfect to us, but it is perfect. And so we can step back from our timeline and trust him. We can trust him that his timing is perfect. We can trust the one that gave us the promise. See, we want to put our trust in the promise itself, and that is something because that is his word and he is his word, but we can take it a step forward and say, God, I trust you. Though you slay me, yet I will trust you. Though a thousand may fall at my left and 10,000 at my right, I will trust you, Lord, that it won't come nigh my house. See, as we look out on the, on the political realm of today, as we look out at the news, and it can seem scary because, you know, everybody's got their opinions. I'm not going to tell you what mine are for once. But <laughs> for one, catch me on the outside. Like, I'll tell you what it is. But not here. But. You know, it can seem scary. Things can seem contentious. People in, a, in an election year, people are extra kind of revved up and ready to roll. And the point is, is that we can trust the Lord beyond all that we see. We can trust that no matter what is happening in the world around us, he has us. Like we talked about earlier, when, when Peter stepped out on the water and when he was looking at Jesus, he was walking on that water. When he started looking around, he started to sink. Yet, Jesus reached out and grabbed him and caught him up. Even when Peter messed up and started looking at everything else, Jesus still caught him and brought him up. And so we can trust God that he's got this. He's got it. See, a lot of times when we get a word, we, especially when we're younger, we want to make it happen. We want to make it happen. And I'm not going to get into it today, but, you know, there's some places at some points in the Bible when people brought forward the, the plan of God, that's sort of an exception, and I'm not going to get into that today. But I will tell you this, we can delay it. <laughs> we may not be able to make it happen, and we may not be able to make it happen faster, and we may not be able to, to make it appear to us now, but I can tell you we can delay it by the, the words that come out of our mouth. And see, the words that come out of our mouth reveals the attitudes within our heart, and the attitudes within our heart then can actually delay what God wants to do. See, the children of Israel were slaves in, in Egypt for 400 years. God does all these miracles. There's a plague of frogs. There's a plague of boils. There's a plague of flies. There's darkness over the land. He does all of these insane, natural, disaster, creative things. He brings them out of the land of Egypt. They're wandering around in the desert. And what do they start to do? Complain. Out of their mouth comes the heart that's saying, I don't like what you're doing. I don't like how you're doing it. I don't like the way you're doing it. I don't like, I don't like this. And it, it, it reveals a heart attitude 
that says, I don't trust you. And so they were delayed 40 years. What should have taken them 11 days took them 40 years. And so in the meantime, that time that can be mean from when we get the word to when we see it fulfilled, we need, we, we should, I encourage you, I hope, I pray, I plead, I conjole. Don't let yourself start to complain. Don't let yourself start to complain. See, words that come out of our mouths reveal what's in our heart. What's in our heart comes out of our mouths. It's a, it's a two-edged sword there. So don't, in, in that meantime, don't let yourself start to complain. But keep your, play, keep your heart in a soft place of, God, I trust you. I trust you with this. See, it says in Galatians chapter 6, I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. God will never be mocked, for what you plant will always be the very thing you harvest. The harvest you reap reveals the seed you planted. The harvest you reap reveals the seed you planted. What are you reaping? I saw your face, Paul. What are you reaping? Is it sadness? Hopelessness? Is it cynicism? Sarcasm? You know, disbelief? Like, well... I've heard that word so many times before. I guess I'll believe it when I see it. Well, Thomas said that, and Jesus walked through the wall and said, well, okay, here you go, Thomas. Put your hand in my hand. See the hole? See the hole in my side? This is one of those things. It's, it's, I feel like I say the same thing every, all the time. You know, you don't need to check your oil every day, but it's a really good idea to check it every once in a while. This is one of those things where... You don't need to constantly turn inward, what we call belly button gazing. You know, what am I saying? What am I thinking? What am I saying? What am I thinking? What am I thinking about? What am I saying? What am I saying about what I'm thinking? What am I, what do you think about what I'm thinking? What do you think about what I'm saying? Like, we don't need to turn it inwards, but it's also really, really, really not wise to never, ever pay attention to what's actually coming out of our mouths. And so it's good every once in a while just to kind of do an oil check of, hey, what am I saying? Because that reveals what is in my heart and what my heart kind of reveals where I'm at. Am I trusting the Lord? Am I believing him? Am I using those words, as, as Pastor Lena said, to war? Like when the circumstance and when the, when the enemy wants to come with like, he's like a lawyer. He wants to come with a stack of evidence. Well, you see, God didn't do it there. And see, that, that happened. And God didn't do that, and this didn't happen, and, and see, you're still facing that, and, and this bill still came, and this diagnosis still came, and, you know, so-and-so died of that, and, you know, so-and-so lost their house because of that. Like, when the devil wants to come at you with all of his evidence about how God is not going to come through, or how it didn't happen before, or it didn't happen when you thought, how you thought, with who you thought, on, on whatever basis... That's when we turn back to the word of God and we say, but yet God has said, God has said, he has said that I am the head and not the tail, that I am blessed and not cursed. He has said that he counts the very hairs on my head. He has said that he is my lover. He is my teacher. He is my counselor. He has said that his grace is sufficient for me and that there is enough grace in every day for me. He has said that when, though there may be morning for a night, there is joy in the morning. He has said, and so we can use those words then to, to counteract the evidence that the enemy is trying to bring us to be mean in that mean time to get us to give up, to get us to step back, to get us to, to be cynical in our hearts. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. To get us to be sarcastic. Well, God always says, but I, I've never seen a miracle. God always talks about miracles, but I've never seen a miracle. Really? Are you saved? <laughs> is that not a miracle? <laughs> I mean, I know, I, I mean, there was a time when I wasn't saved, and I mean, I was a good sinner. I was really, really not saved. I mean, not 
saved. I was a good sinner. And then Jesus came into my life. And in a moment, I stepped from death into life. I stepped from hopeless into hope. I stepped from, from depression into joy. And some of those things I had a journey to go through. And some of them were overnight instantaneous. But that's a miracle. I mean, it's a miracle that I'm still standing here because there was a time when I was suicidal and I was ready to run my car off of a bridge. And Jesus saved me. And so if you want to claim that you've never seen a miracle, come talk to me and I'll tell you all about mine. And then I'll tell you about yours because if you love Jesus, you've had a miracle. <laughs> and so Joseph... Joseph was in the Old Testament of the Bible. He was 17 years old. He had 10 brothers, same father, different mother. And he was his daddy's favorite. And he was 17, and so he wasn't real wise. And he had all these dreams about his brothers and his mothers and his father, his mother and his father bowing down to him. And he told his brothers about it not wise because he was already his daddy's favorite and so his brothers grabbed him by the nape of the neck and threw him into a pit and then they decided to sell him off into slavery and he has this word he has this, these dreams multiple dreams from the lord that he knows from the lord of what he's seen but he's in a pit and his brothers are gone and his daddy's not there to save him and then he's he's sold into slavery and he's working in this man's house, and he is unjustly, falsely accused of something that he did not do, and he goes to prison for it. He goes to prison. And then he helps these two other prisoners get out of prison, and they promise to remember him, and they don't. They forget their promise. And then through a miracle of God, he gets elevated into the palace. So he goes from the pit to Potiphar's house. I like the alliteration to the prison, to the palace. He always kept his heart right. It was 22 years before he saw that word come to pass. From the time he was 17 till he was 39, 22 years. But he never gave up on God. He never, he never stepped back. He never got bitter. He didn't get mean. He didn't get cynical. He didn't get sarcastic. He kept believing God. And he ended up saving his entire family and all the other nations on the earth from a massive famine. Some pretty good outcome. So let's read the rest of Galatians. I'll start over. God will never be mocked for what you plant will always be the very thing you harvest. And the harvest you reap reveals the seed that you planted. If you plant the corrupt seeds of self-life into the natural realm, you can expect a harvest of corruption. If you plant the good seeds of the spirit life, you will reap beautiful fruits that grow from the everlasting life of the spirit. And don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds. For the season of reaping, the wonderful harvest you've planted is coming. It is coming. Take advantage of every opportunity to be a blessing to others, especially to our brothers and sisters and the family of faith. So what if you've been waiting 22 years for a word to come, to pass? Whew. The meantime, it can be mean. But here it tells us, don't grow weary in, gro in planting your good seeds. Don't grow weary in planting your good seeds. I want to encourage you today don't grow weary in planting your good seeds. Continue to plant seeds of faith in one another. How about we not speak 
over our city, our county, our, our state, our country. Well, this thing is just all going to H E double L in a handbasket. How about, how, how, about, how about we say, yet the Lord says there remains a remnant. And if we pray, if we pray, if we humble ourselves and pray that he will bring our nation back, how about if we start to speak over our family, over our, our loved ones? How about that lost loved one that's not saved instead of, well, I don't know when it's ever going to happen, if it'll ever happen, gosh. How about we start saying, Lord, I thank you that my loved ones, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Lord, I thank you that they come into a relationship with you, that, Lord, you reveal yourself to them. Lord, that they are, they are coming across people. Father, you're not leaving them alone, that wherever they go, at Walmart, at Pizza Hut, at, at the restaurants, God, they are surrounded with your warriors. And so, Father, I thank you that they are coming into the kingdom. Lord, I thank you that every Every word that you have said is true and let everything else be a lie. And so, Father, I stand on the truth of your word. I stand on the truth of what you have said about me. I stand on the truth of what you have said about my country. I stand on the truth of what you said about our church. Lord, I thank you, God, that we are moving forward in miracles. Lord, I thank you that there is a, a healing revival in Fort Bend County. Lord, I thank you, God, that Easy is strong. I thank you that Lena is strong. I thank you for the books they have yet to write. Lord, I thank you for the ministry that they have yet to see. Lord, I thank you for that new revival of young people that's coming. God, I thank you for the new revival that's coming. Lord, I thank you that our kids down in Epic Kids are filled with the Spirit from a young age, Lord, that there's not a junior Holy Spirit, that they begin to prophesy, that they get the prophetic words, that they lay their hands on, on the lost and, they, and, and the sick and they are healed. How about we start planting some seeds <laughs> Let's plant some seeds. Let's, let's, let's do a little oil check, what's coming out of our mouth. See what harvest we're, we're getting there. And if it's not one that we want, let's change the seeds. Change your seeds. See, my dad's a farmer, like a for real, not a little 20 acre, you know, some chickens and some goats, like several hundred cows and acres and big tractors, right? Every once in a while, based on the trends that he sees in the harvest, he'll change his seed. He'll get a different variety of wheat. If he sees that for the last couple of years he's been battling mold, he'll get one that has been not GMO because wheat is not GMO. That's corn. He does wheat, but he'll get a hybrid of some sort of seed that's then resistant to the mold. So he'll change his seed. If we don't like the harvest that's in our life, let's change the seed. <laughs> we have an option. We have, we have choices here. We have variety. You know, if I want more faith in my life, how about I start planting some seeds of faith? How about I memorize some scriptures on faith so that I can get those down into my heart? How about if, if I want some more love in my life, how about I start planting more seeds of love to others around me? You know, maybe when I run into Walmart, of course, I don't run into Walmart. I only do curbside pickups so that I don't overspend and buy a bunch of stuff that I don't need at Walmart. But, you know, wherever you're going into, how about you talk to the people you don't just go in there and get your stuff done and then get out. I mean, my husband is the ultimate. How are you, how's your day? And he means it. He looks them straight in the eye. How are you doing today? How's your, and I mean, these people, they're just bleep, bleep, bleep. And he says it and they're like, somebody noticed me? I'm not invisible here? You're not just about yourself and I, I exist? I'm here? And I mean, they're little, they're eyes. They light up. They're like, I'm good. I'm, how are you? And he, he engages them in a little conversation. I mean, to be seen. That's what this generation, that's what, that's what people of the world want nowadays. They want to be seen. They want to be known. They want to be understood. They, they want to know that they matter. They want to have a purpose in their life. 
Well, what better purpose than Jesus? What better purpose than love, grace, mercy, joy, hope? How about spreading a little seed of hope? And then guess what you get back? A harvest of hope. So let's, let's do a little oil check here, a harvest check here. What? Okay, Holy Spirit. You know, you don't, you don't have to do it on, your, on yourself. You can ask the Holy Spirit. He is our counselor, our teacher, our friend. You can say, Holy Spirit. All right, everybody just close your eyes. We're going to do a little exercise here. Holy Spirit, we give you permission. We ask you, do we need to change any seeds? Is there a harvest going on in us that is not the one that you would have going on in us? Help us change our seeds, Lord. Help us change our seeds. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, I want to encourage you this morning. Hold on to those words. Because they are words of life. They are from God. They are the things that are to bring us life. They are to bring us joy. They are to bring us to hope to get us through the meantime until we see that thing come to pass. They are our, our battle, our, our, our tools for battle that we use when the enemy comes at us and tries to build up his evidence saying it's never going to happen. It's too late. You messed up too much. It's gone on too long. It's not possible. Well, you know what? My God lives outside of our space-time continuum. Time is in his hands. He's not in its hands. He holds the time, and so he can actually redeem the time. He can actually redeem it. And I don't mean, like, make it better. I mean actually physically redeem it. He can redeem the time. And so it doesn't matter where you are on this spectrum. Either, you know, you just got a prophetic word and you want it to happen yesterday or you got one 20 years ago and you're still believing, I just want to say, stay believing. Stay trusting. He is trustworthy. He is good all the time. He never, ever, ever goes back on his word. He does not lie. He can't lie. It's, it's, it's not who he is. He cannot physically do it. We can always trust him. We may not be able to trust our circumstances. We can't trust what we see with our eyes. We may not be able to trust what the world tells us out there, but we can trust Jesus. We can trust the Lord. We can trust what he says to us. And so stand to your feet with me. Oh, Jesus. You are the love of our lives. And we, we worship you, we praise you, we give all honor and glory to you. Oh, Lord, let's just plant some seeds of worship. Let's plant some seeds of, of gratefulness and thankfulness. I just encourage you, begin to thank him right now, out loud. Thank you for saving us, Jesus. Thank you for reaching me in that dark pit of hatred and unforgiveness and bitterness and judgment. God, I, I hated men, I hated myself, I hated life, and I, I just hated everything, and you reached me. And so I thank you for your love that broke through everything. I thank you for your grace that broke through everything. I thank you for the life and the hope that you have given me. And so I praise you, Jesus. I praise you. I give you all praise. I give you thanks because you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. And so, Lord, I thank you this morning that every word you have spoken is true. Still. <laughs> Still, it is true. Whether it's been a little bit of time or it's been a long, mean time, God, it's still true. And it's still working on our behalf. And so, Lord, if we need to change our seed for a different harvest... Holy Spirit, I pray that this week you would reveal it to us. Reveal it to us. Holy Spirit, remind us to begin to plant 
the harvest, the seed for the harvest that we want, whether it be of love, joy, peace, kindness, relationship, friendship. God, whatever it is, Lord, remind us to begin to plant those seeds. And so we give you all praise and all glory this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.